Hi, if this whistle stop gives you more information on the England Rugby Tackle Height Sanction Framework and a reminder of the DESK principle. So let's jump straight in. OT, can you give an overview of what process refereeing is and why a match official should build this in to their game management? Yeah, certainly can, JW. For a match official to maintain safety and discipline within the game, an escalation process is required. A referee can give appropriate warnings and sanctions in an attempt to alter play behaviour, but can also resort to cards when the behaviour doesn't improve or in cases of more serious foul play. That's what we mean by escalation. OK, I get that OT, but as you know, many match officials are already using the DESK principle. For those who aren't familiar with this or new to the world of refereeing, could you give us a bit of a recap? Yeah, of course. So DESK stands for Describe, Explain, Sanction and Confirm. Describe. Think about what the individual's done, what have you seen and why have you stopped the game. Explain. Ask yourself why the individual's actions are unacceptable and what have they done. Sanction. Consider what sanctions you should give as a result of the individual's actions and what may occur if their behaviour doesn't change. And confirm, does the individual understand the sanction? Can we allow them to learn and adapt? Thanks OT, that's a very clear explanation of what DESK stands for and how to use it. But to help us further, can we take a look at the Tackle Height Sanction Framework? How can match officials use this in the middle of a match to help them achieve the right outcome when they're under pressure to make the right decision? Well, the first steps to study the Tackle Height Sanction Framework. This clearly lays out the thought process that any match official should go through when there's been foul play, either by the tackler or by the ball carrier. The match official should ask themselves the following questions. Has foul play been committed? What's the degree of danger? And is there any mitigation? As a match official develops their tackle process, and we should be thinking of starting low and are working our way up the escalation process. Let's take a look at some clips to help explain this escalation process and how it may apply to the DLV. Remember, as a match official in a live game, you only get one look at the action in real time from one angle. In the first clip, we see the red ball carrier being tackled by two blue defenders. Both of the defenders make contact above the base of the sternum. However, the first player does adjust the height of their grip in line with the base of the sternum. If this tackle was in isolation, we would look to play on as no foul play has been committed. However, the second tackler is never in a position to execute a legal tackle and he tackles the ball carrier over the shoulders. A match official should look to penalise this as it is clearly a high tackle. In this clip, we see the red ball carrier make a break down the wing and the blue fullback tackles him illegally over the shoulder. Although no head or neck contact has occurred, there has still been foul play. We can add an extra layer of context to this clip. It is from the same quarter of the same game in the first clip. There isn't another defensive line and the high tackle therefore prevents the red player from scoring a try. In this instance, an appropriate sanction would be a yellow card against blue 15 and a penalty try awarded between the posts. Within this sequence of tackles, we see a couple of good dominant and legal tackles by the red players. However, there is a late and high tackle made on blue 10 after he has offloaded the ball. Match officials should look to penalise this sort of foul play. If we apply the tackle height sanction framework to this scenario, we can arrive at the appropriate outcome. 
Has contact above the base of the sternum occurred? Yes. Which player initiated the contact? The tackler. Has foul play been committed by the tackler? Yes. What is the degree of danger? High speed, high tackle, high danger. Is there any mitigation? No. Therefore, a yellow card would be appropriate. So that it's clear, can you explain when and why a match official should switch from using the tackle height sanction framework to the World Rugby Head Contact process? Yeah, JW. So it's important to remember that the World Rugby Head Contact process is still going to be a go-to process for any situation where head or neck contact has been made. That's because player safety is always our main priority in these situations. Using this process, we start from the very top at red card and mitigate as per the circumstances to arrive at an appropriate outcome. If there's a tackle that starts above or slips above the base of the sternum without making that head or neck contact, then match officials should opt to follow the tackle height sanction framework, which we've said works in the opposite direction. You should start off by considering a lower sanction and based on the circumstances, work your way up. So to be clear, when the match officials are using the tackle height sanction framework, they'll be at the low end of the scale and working their way up depending on the circumstances? Absolutely. So there's clearly work to do to understand the tackle height sanction framework and the circumstances that warrant a sanction? Exactly, and it's really important that our community of match officials do this. To help, we've put together some examples of sanctionable offences. Let's clarify what's going on in each of these clips. In this first clip, let's take a quick look at a now sanctionable offence. If we pause the video and replay, we can see that the contact on the red ball carrier from the black and white defender hits above the base of the sternum, and we should now look to sanction these type of tackles moving forward. In the second example, we can see that there is head and neck contact made from the red defender. Rather than using the tackle height sanction framework, we should look to use the World Rugby head contact process. Let's take a look at how the referee and his assistant referee use this process to make an appropriate and accurate decision. Six red. Six red is coming across. He is cover, but there is somebody on his inside. He hits initially top of the shoulder and then rises up, hits head on the 11 white, gets us into touch. So yellow card, penalty in 15. Six. Okay, so we've got it coming across, he hits shoulder first, rises up, takes it, hits head neck. Okay. So it's a yellow card, penalty in 15. In this clip, we have another example of head contact. In this situation, it is head on head due to the upright grey tackler making direct head on head contact with the red ball carrier. <laughs> The referee and his assistant ultimately give a red card, but it's important to understand the process of how they get to that decision. Let's take a look. I've got head on head contact by the no number grey player. Yeah. At this stage, I don't have any mitigating factors. No, There's no right. sudden drop in height. No. It's an upright tackle. Yeah. There's no change in direction, Agreed. which leads me to a red card. Yeah, I've got no mitigation. For Thank that. you. So we've got foul play because we've got contact to the head. There's no mitigating factors. There wasn't a sudden drop in height. There wasn't a change in direction. I've got no option. Thanks, OT. That's been really informative. While there's been a lot of information to take in in this whistle stop, where can match officials and others within our game go and find further information? So there's three main resources. Firstly, the England Rugby Tackle Height Hub. 
Secondly, the referee and rugby safe toolkits on Keep Your Boots On. And finally, visiting the World Rugby website. Those are some great uh, resources, but have you got some handy tips too? So firstly, I'd start off by downloading the England Rugby Tackle Height Sanction Framework and the World Rugby Head Contact Process and getting really familiar with these protocols. You should try using the language in the flowcharts when describing your decisions to players. Secondly, go along to your local rugby club and help out with training sessions and practice your refereeing. Finally, help others in your refereeing environments by offering hints and tips by signposting them to the RFU Tackle Height Hub. That's a great set of tips, OT. Thanks for that. Cheers.